Howdy folks, Nathan here with PFL Camper Corner. And this is David and behind him is his special project. This is amazing and I am dying to hear the story behind this trailer. What made you build it? Well, uh, a caboose, you wonder why it's a caboose. I guess my love of trains came from my grandpa and he lived right next to a train track and he was blind. And so whenever we would walk, he would take his stick and follow the train tracks. He'd go out the back door, hit the tracks and we'd follow the train tracks. And, and so that's kind of where my love of trains came from. This is really cool. And what I especially like is the fact that you did this on your own. This is your project. I did, yeah. And can you talk about the origins of where this all started? I believe that the platform started somewhere else. It did, we had bought a camper. It was a 1975 Great Divide. Julie and I bought when the kids were just small. It sat in the back 40 and just started to rot because I didn't maintain the roof. Mm -hmm. And so everything rotted out but the frame was still in great shape. And so I had this great idea, I'll just take it down to the frame and start over. And that's when the caboose idea came about, you know, cause I could, it could have been anything at that point. Sure. Some people ask me, well, why'd you build it out of wood? Why didn't you, you know, be fiberglass or something? Well, I am a builder and that's all I've ever done in my life is build houses. And so I know wood mm -hmm. and I know how wood reacts and I can build with wood and I have all the tools for wood. And so I thought, let's just build one out of wood. And the early cabooses were all built out of wood. That's right. What camper can you do that on? <laughs> <laughs> what a fun project. Let's check it out. Come on, guys. Okay. Well, first of all, Nathan, got the bike here for a reason. One of the big design features on the caboose was the fact that it had to have a place for my bike so that when we get to our camping spot, we can still go have fun. Right. So I made the front porch just wide enough so that you can still open the door, strap the bike down, and still get in. So and the so wrap is here in order to show us exactly where you're gonna park that exactly. bike. Exactly. Which is right up there, and then there's some tie downs here. And um, if you look, guys, you'll see the eye hooks down there actually go up and over the handlebars, right? That's it. Yep. And then they attach to the, uh, the front over here, up and over this railing on the tongue. Right, and they go down to the tongue where you were showing I just earlier. welded some chain links onto the tongue right. right here. And so I run my straps up to the handlebars and, and then these to the back. Here. So I'll have four straps, strap in front and the back. But you can still jump over the strap and get in the door. So basically this is sort of an undercover toy hauler this as my well. Toy, toy hauler. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> That and the is, bikes go on the back. Right. The and motorbike the, on the front. And, and then the, the bicycles, bicycles go on the back. back. Right. Yeah. Now, uh, this ladder leads to the top, obviously, and you have another one on the, on the other side. Right. And these are functional, right? They are functional, but they're aesthetic. You know, had to look like a caboose, of course. <laughs> Let's take a look at the back. So this platform here actually serves the purpose as well. This is where you put your bicycles, right? Well, two, two things. Aesthetically, you have to have a porch on front and back for it to be a caboose, right? right. And a ladder on front and back. Let's talk about the construction sure. of this vehicle. Bring us up to where we are right now. Okay, well, the frame, of course, was uh, you know from the old camper. It was just two uh, rectangular tubing. Mm -hmm. But I started with a wood uh, uh, platform. Mm -hmm. What you see right here, the two by fours, mm -hmm. these aren't just aesthetic. This is the actual frame. So you have like an external frame the way an actual it's caboose a, would have it, it's right? It's an exoskeleton. Ah. This this is the only frame there is. There's so no, on the inside, it's just the, the wood that plywood. you're seeing is just right. the plywood that's okay. So on the other side of this, you have the plywood. Uh -huh. Then I put a half inch of foam board. Mm -hmm. And then I put, you know, just eighth inch paneling on the other side. So the foam board is your insulation right. with, in between. Okay. And what, what that does for me is there's no thermal, there's no thermal uh, conductivity of cold or warm air because there's no studs to take the the cold or warmth to the inside. You're like in, encapsulated in foam. This has got to weigh a little bit. My total weight dry 
is uh, right around 6,000 pounds. Okay. And then if I put water and then all our stuff and then put my 330 pound motorcycle on the front, I'm a little bit over 7,000 pounds. Gotcha. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's pushing the limits of, of what, let's just say it's a little heavier than what an 18 foot camper would be. <laughs> of course, but yeah. I mean, look what you're getting. Now, uh, while we're talking about this, explain to me the going off the rails on the side here. I mean, it's there's a lot of ways you can look at that. <laughs> exactly. I'm just curious if you had a specific reason for putting that on there. No, it, it does have multiple meanings. You know, there's of course a song about going off the rails mm -hmm. and uh, it explains me a little bit because it's like I see a shiny thing and I just want to go there. You know? <laughs> Short attention span. Roman exactly. would appreciate that actually. So. And so that's kind of, you know, I'm always doing crazy stuff like this and, you know, all the houses I design, there's something crazy about them. I bet you get people honking at you on the highway oh, as they pass word. you and waving and giving you thumbs up. Every campground we'd go to, you know, you'd have people taking pictures and coming up and wanting to talk about it. And, right. And I enjoy that. You get to meet people. That's that got to be such a hoot. Yeah. That really, that really and, and, and here's the cool part about this. I mean, it's really functional. This isn't just something that you put together as an aesthetic puzzle that, hey, look at this. You actually can load your motorcycle there. You can actually put your bikes back there. Right. And you have right. real living quarters on the inside. And that's really cool stuff. So let's take a look at the interior. Whenever you have a camper for an Eon, you get used to some, some things. Mm -hmm. That noise right there, it reminds me of my kids camping. <laughs> so. Along with the screen, I had to keep it just for that noise. I totally get it, and it, and it fits beautifully. I it mean, this, this really does it's, look it's, like it belongs. It's, yeah, I mean, it's a little weathered. It's, you know, 40s, 1975, how old is that? Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's in the 40s. 40-some years old. It's so, slightly uh, younger than yeah. me. <laughs> so the camper before was, of course, for six people. I oriented this one so just for Julie and I. But I left the dinette area just uh, completely usable as a bed as well. We can take the chairs out and then put a bed down for the grandkids and take a couple grandkids if we want to. All the wood that I used in here, uh -huh. that, uh, stained, this is actually a tree that was on the property no that I cut down and I've got a sawmill. Uh -huh. And I, I milled all this all this wood on my sawmill. Wow, talk about do DIY, you yeah. really did it yourself. Right. That's cool. Yeah, so so this is all, and then I left it rough, you know, kind of the rough look as well. Now, and then I also reused the hardware uh -huh. off of the old camper. So the hinges and, and, and the catch yep. and all that, that's off the old camper. Off the old camper. Got and it. I just painted them up. You're, you're towing this with a Chevy, right? I am. Well, it's a GMC. A GMC, but yeah. General so, Motors. Yeah, General yeah. Motors. A uh, one yeah. ton. Yeah, one ton uh, 1990 square body with the Cummins that, that with, Andre did a video on. That's right, Andre yeah. did do that video yeah. and he fell in love with that truck yeah. by the way. <laughs> I think he was thinking about getting rid of it, trying to swap right. you for his uh, Hummer. <laughs> uh, let's talk about what's down here because this looks like this is all of your um, electrical conduits and I noticed the solar power, uh, That's power right. on the roof. Yep, I have, solar, have four solar panels on the roof and then this is where my cheap little inverter, DeWalt inverter and then my battery and for the things that we use camping, it works great. Charges your phones and, you know, does whatever we need. Because uh, that's a compact propane heater right there. This is my heater. You know, I, I'm all about simple, functional, and easy to fix. Right. And so this right here was cheap. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, on cold, cold nights with that half inch foam insulation and then Anderson windows, mm -hmm. double pane windows, Right. this thing stays toast, toasty warm. I bet it does, and that probably doesn't get a lot of use because you don't have to fire so it the off, pilot, right? believe it or not, the pilot light on this thing keeps this thing warm enough <laughs> at night. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, and I do have a carbon monoxide detector just in case. There's no air conditioner in here, but for, of course, Colorado, you know, you don't really need you know, you don't really need an air. Right. Yeah, that you just fire it right you up. Just have it. a little bit of airflow. So you, you know, you look at this and think, wow, that's a lot of countertop space. Yeah, it is. There's no stove here. Ah, okay. But the practical side of me, again. There you go. Coleman stove that hooks up to a propane tank, and you just simply, you know, pick this up and set up and boom, you cook your meals, and you can take it outside. Right. So you cook inside, outside, and it. 
have all this countertop space for other uses besides taking up space for a stove. And then it fits nicely in my drawer right there. And then I made this space big enough. It's actually big enough so that you could have a dorm fridge uh -huh. as well. Right now it's just, I just have the cooler. Um, but what I want to, you know, want to get is a, uh, a Dometic uh, fridge uh -huh. that'll go in here. But I made, you know, all the all the drawers. I made made them so that they, you know, they stop. But that you can still take them out if you want to. All out of half inch plywood. Yeah, they seem really solid. Yeah. Well, let's let's go into the bedroom okay. area. All right, so yeah, this kitchen dining room. Please come into the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> so his and her beds, and the reason you know it's not one bed is because I needed my aisle down the middle. Right. Um, I did make it so that this bed can slide over uh, if you want to, or this one you take the mattress and throw it on top of here, and this side folds up into a desk. Oh, no kidding. So you could sit at the window and, and work if you wanted to, and then have both mattresses stacked on this side during the day. I built the shower all myself. Something significant about about the camper is I completely, I'm, I'm a builder, mm -hmm. and so I've done lots of tile work in my years, and they have a waterproofing material called Red Guard. There's several different kinds, but it's, it's you paint it on and it makes everything waterproof, uh -huh. and you use that before you tile. Well, not only did I waterproof my whole shower with that material. I coated the entire camper, inside, outside, upside, oh. downside, with three coats of Red Guard before I ever painted the outside. One thing I like are big bathrooms. I'm a big guy and I yeah. totally can appreciate having a little okay. bit of elbow here, room. Come in, come in here, I want you to stand in my shower. All right, I'm gonna okay. say We're gonna see if this fits the Nathan test right here. Yeah, well, this is, you, uh, you know, that's something I hear every day, come into my shower. <laughs> I'm married and I don't even hear that, so yeah. All right, so, now I want yeah. you to take the curtain okay. and roll the curtain around. All right. And so I want you to see my curtain rod. I made it bowed out right here. Yeah, look at that. So that you could at least have elbow room in yeah. the shower. And you know, uh, even when I'm not slouching, I'm 6'1", and I have a lot of extra headroom. And, and that's one thing in most RVs, you don't have that kind of no, space. No, you don't. And, yeah. and, and God forbid you lift up your arms. So right. this is really cool. Well, let, let's hop outside because I want to ask you about the future of this vehicle. Yeah. I could tell there are a few things that you were, like the refrigerator, that you're thinking about making changes in the right. future. Yep. What's the future of this trailer? Well, uh, it, I don't have a water heater in it yet, uh -huh. okay. Uh, it's camping, but I may put me uh, one of those uh, on-demand water heaters in it, mm -hmm. and then get me a 12-volt fridge. Okay. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's pretty livable. Julie and I have taken it, we took it all the way from Colorado to Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, the Dakotas, wow. and back. And then we took it for another trip down to uh, Kansas uh, and back. So we put about 5,000 miles on it so far. And there's really not, it's simple, it's, it's easy to tow. You know, I don't worry about, I had a blowout on, on uh, right near Sydney, Nebraska on I-80. Uh -huh. And once the tire blew, it, it didn't tear anything up because all the plywood was just nice and strong. Right. And so, you know, I put it through the paces and it's done really well. And I don't know, I'm just super happy with it so far. And if I back it into something, I can fix it. Right, because you're the one who it's built wood. it. You're the one who, <laughs> and it's wood, so you right. can actually do it. This was a fantastic example of what you can do with a little bit of ingenuity and some serious el elbow grease. I do appreciate all of the time you took out to show us this fantastic trailer. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. David, it's been a pleasure. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, Nathan. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.